So I was asked to make a tutorial series about input from a joystick, game controller, game pad, whatever you want to call it. Unity still calls it a joystick. Uh, I know this because if you unplug the controller and plug it back in, if you watch in the lower left corner here, it actually says joystick. So whatever terminology you want to use. So what we're going to do is this series of videos is going to progressively do more and more of the information. This one is just about capturing the raw data. And that's really all this one's going to be. So you're going to see the data, you're going to see the values that are captured, but you're not actually going to do much with it other than display it. So there are a few simple commands to extract the information from the controller. But I want to give you a quick explanation first. So the main thing is that Unity doesn't see like a left analog stick and a right analog stick and a left and right uh, triggers. What it actually sees are separate axes. So it sees a left right axis for the left analog stick. It sees an up down axis for the uh, left analog stick sees left right axis or axis for the right analog stick on and on and on so in other words don't look for um, look to get information from a specific analog stick or a specific button rather it looks at them as individual axes so let's go about this uh, rather than just showing you the code let's actually delve in a little bit deeper so if you go to project settings and you go to input this is what it should look like by default. I think depending on the devices you have attached, this number might be 17. And this was a, what I was talking about, horizontal. So this is the horizontal axis on, axis, yeah, on the left analog stick. You even see default left, right. Vertical is the, um, it's the uh, vertical, the up, down, as you can see, up and down on the left analog stick. If you go further, this horizontal, at least on my controller, um, maps to the left, right triggers. So again, even though they're two separate buttons, um, the triggers are also analog in nature. So um, these also, uh, so this is also uh, considered a uh, left and right um, axis. So in that case, two separate buttons making up one axis. And then the vertical, um, that is, I believe, the vertical on the right analog stick. Again, depends on what type of control you're using. You'll know as soon as you plug it in. So what you can do is you can start making changes to these to get exactly the effect you want. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just go to game object, create empty, add component, mesh, text mesh. Um, let's just put test in here so we can see where it is and what it looks like. Character size 0.15 so it's not blurry. Uh, font size 60. And it's Arial. Now, in whatever you're using, your game, whatever you're making, you're not going to need this. This is for demonstrative purposes only. That's why I'm putting it here, is just so you can see what the raw data looks like and give you a basic explanation of what you can do with that data. So again, this one is just showing you how to capture the data. We're really not doing anything with it other than displaying it. Okay, so what we're going to call this is LR. Um, L stick or left stick. So left and right on the left stick. So right click, create C sharp script. And just to keep it simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a different object for each axis. That way you uh, we don't have to do a bunch of if statements and you could just see exactly what information is displayed where. So this will be um, We'll just call this T1 for text one. Again, I'm not too concerned about the naming. I'm just looking at the capturing of the information. So let's go ahead and put T1 here and open that up. 
So since we're trying to modify the text mesh, we need to get component text mesh text. And again, in whatever your final project is, you're not going to be doing this. This is, again, just to display the data. So here's the important part. Input dot get access again you see that term access it's not thinking left control it's not thinking right controller uh, it's thinking all of these individual um, axes so get access horizontal it's imperative that you get it spelled exactly right so let's go back to edit project settings input Right there, horizontal. That is the name that you're looking for. Now, this should, I believe, work now. So, actually, we got to do one more thing. Again, this part you won't have to do for your application, but because this is text and this returns a float value, you have to convert it to a string only for our purposes here, only for the purpose of displaying it in a text field. So we run it, and here we go. I'm going to press the left. Here we go, negative 1. Press it all the way to right, positive 1. If you press it just a little bit, you get numbers in between. And what you can do is you can use these in-between numbers to make decisions. Like maybe a character has a slow walk, a medium walk, and then an outright run. Well, you'd be making the decision on the speed and animation that's being displayed based on the range of numbers. So uh, say you're running, you're moving to the left. If it's less than zero, but uh, greater than negative two, then it's one animation and one speed. If it's less than negative two, but greater than negative five, it's a second speed and a second animation. And then if it's less than negative five, it's a all out run with a, a different animation. And that's how you uh, take this data and actually do something with it. Again, I'm gonna do more videos where we actually see, see that in play, but I just wanna give you a heads up, that's what you do. You take these values and you make decisions based on these values. But this one is just about the capturing. Okay. So we've captured the first one. Second one, and in, so far we haven't made any changes, but we're going to, because ultimately when we get down here, it starts to break things. So uh, vertical. What we want here is, uh, again, we'll leave this the same. So we'll just copy this object, paste it, move it down. And we will call this UD for up, down on the L stick. UD. Okay. We'll get rid of that text. And don't let the, um, or I should say that script, rather. Don't let the scripts uh, cloud what we're doing here. Again, this is just trying to keep it simple so we don't have to do a bunch of if statements and so forth. And so we'll put T2 on the second one. And then we just copy this. We paste it here. But we now we have to change it to vertical. Okay, so again, edit project settings input vertical. It's that exact name and just as this one says it uses left and right, this says up and down. So this is this is telling you the actual functionality. This name really doesn't mean anything. This is the functionality, the left and the right. And in this case, the up and the down. So we have 
our new script that says vertical and is it attached to this yes it is so this should now track the vertical so left right up down beautiful you can now capture data from the left analog stick so what about the um, triggers at the top so what we're going to do is we go back to edit we go back to project settings we go back to input now the thing is it is also named horizontal so once you start changing names um, you'll see what's going to happen so let's just change this name we'll call this trig oh yeah trigs because it's the true triggers copy paste and we'll call this lr triggs because we don't want the names to match exactly because i don't want to confuse what we're doing remove that script create a new script we'll just call this t3 so lr t3 we open that up click ok we paste and it was triggs and we'll save that so lr triggs has t3 on it edit project settings again just double checking everything triggs and now we move it down on the screen now let's see what happens so up down and now suddenly left right is now going to that one so now that breaks what we're working on so let's go back to edit to project input and so if you're just doing uh, left and right that's fine if you start doing more then it starts breaking things so what we're going to do here is we're going to go back up and we are going to change type from key or mouse to joystick axis we're going to change um, joy number to just joystick one. Joystick axis. Joystick one. As you can see, this one defaults to joystick axis. And joystick one. also want to change this will be x-axis because that's horizontal this will be y-axis and then this will be third axis so left right up down left trigger right trigger beautiful but now you notice suddenly this isn't working anymore it's not resorting to zero that's because of this it's saying go out to zero zero one to three decimal points for the dead zone but when you come down to this new one it bumps it all the way up to one nine that has to do with the changing of the type so what you can do is you can just bump that up to whatever number uh, is acceptable to you and this is actually part of game control uh, a game balance I should say it's part of game balance because how subtly do you want someone to have to move the trigger uh, how subtly do you want someone to have to move the analog stick that kind of thing so um, I suspect that because it's the triggers it's why it's higher but again if uh, it doesn't actually have to be the triggers it looks like it's the third axis that's being treated as uh, the trigger and that if I chose a different axis, then it would be um, like the right analog stick. So we'll do this again. Left, see, now it goes back to zero. Right, up, down, left trigger, right trigger. Actually, that up, 
Okay, it's stuck at one time. Um, I'll have to double check, make sure I didn't make a mistake, but it's zero now. Left positive, right negative. So that we probably want to switch. And again, I'm trying to do this a little bit at a time. I don't want to make all the changes. I want you to see what it does and then how the change here makes a difference. So in that case, that's invert. So we're going to invert the buttons. Now, if you watch left, well, obviously you can't see the buttons I'm pressing, but left is now negative, right is now positive. So uh, not trying to, you know, uh, be repetitive, but so many little things go into the control. You know, it'd been easy enough just to say, Here, how, here's how you do left and right. But realistically, if you're trying to map the whole control, there's a lot to it. And then you can just go out from there. Uh, if you go, um, you can do like vertical and more. You can add more. And basically, you can do like the right analog stick. But I think that's enough for one video. We'll pick it up from there. If anything isn't clear, just put it in the comments. And uh, that should do it.